could this happen? An angel died to protect a demon, and then she revived so casually? Please don't kill me. I was only knocked unconscious. I'll apologize for making you worry, but I won't pay any remunerations or give any other form of compensation. <gasps> Desco thought you were dead. Desco was worried. But why would you guys be worried about me? You were just about to trade me into the Corruptor Mint for the bounty reward. Only Fenric was trying to do that. We didn't really agree with him on that. This woman... Why did she risk her life to save our lord? Is she after our money, or...? Looks like another problem has arisen before the presidential eve election. Anyway, what is going on here? The deceased warden has revived and is now out to take my life? The warden was burned to ashes by Desco's attack. Yes! Mr. Warden should have been completely killed by Desco! <laughs> Did you really think that was enough to kill me? What was that? Were you just trying to imitate Axel? Huh? No, I, I didn't see anything. Wait, was that really me? Axel's ability to survive is on par with a cockroach. I might have underestimated him, thinking Desco was strong enough to kill him. We were once comrades who fought side by side. But if he intends to hinder us, no other choice. We must exterminate him. Yes! Roaches must be exterminated! Pray that Desco let slip away must be killed by Desco as our final boss! Don't you think it's weird, though? Axel was a natural-born suck-up. Why wasn't he with a supporting force? I could see him coming up to us to polish our shoes while we're still expanding in power. It sure is weird that he just attacked us. There must be a reason for that. My lord, I shall go ahead and order the Prinnies to investigate. I'm counting on that. Anyway, which area shall we head over to now, Fenric? Yes, my lord. We will head to the most challenging upper-level area where the boss-level demons live. Episode 6. The A-Virus Pandemic. First time coming here, too. I'm not sure if it's still the same, but this used to be the training grounds for those who were vying for the president's office. A greedy angel would only add another dead body to the pile here. Oh, is that so? You never know, right? Wait a second. You, angel! Why in the world are you following us? following you, we're just headed in the same direction. I don't mind leaving you if you really insist, but not until I get paid. Paid? For saving Mr. Valvatorez's life, of course. You said his bounty is 10 million hell, right? Then I should get at least half of that for risking my life for him. Did you really do that only for the Xenons? It didn't seem like that to me. How amazing! Your obsession with money is definitely at a final boss level! I know it'll take a while to collect 5 million health, so I'll go ahead and put it on your tab for now. Do not degrade our lord. Don't think that what you did was a favor to him. That's right! That attack wouldn't have done any damage to me! In other words, there are no favors owed between the two of us. Then you shouldn't have any problem with me, just because we have the same destination. Ugh. She's going to follow us no matter what. Such an annoying angel. Big Sis, there has been no...
no progress in the love between those two. You're right. I only feel more hate instead of love. We still aren't sure who that angel really is yet. Well, I know one thing for sure. Her name isn't as beefy sounding as Volcanus. She's gotta be Valsy's first love, Artina. How do you know? Do you have some sort of psychic power? It's called women's intuition. In other words, you have no proof, but you've already concluded that she was his first love. The upper level of the netherworld. An area where only the privileged few black blood demons who possess the title of boss characters reside. The freezing air and jumbled gravestones have long driven off many a visitor. The only beings who are allowed to live here are the netherworld's strongest demons. Human heroes often venture to this level, seeking to kill its prized inhabitants. There you are, pretty instructor! <laughs> that voice! Brace yourself! I'll finally get rid of you today! I thought it was Warden Axel. Since their voices sound remarkably similar, but he's just in. Although their voices do sound similar, he's still a black blood demon. We must keep our guard up. But his voice is exactly like Axel's! My reflexes might kick in, forcing me to let my guard down. Today's the last day you'll ever get to talk about me like that! I'll pay you back for all the crap I've had to go through because of you guys! His voice is exactly like Axel's. It's almost as if Axel was right there. Wait a second! Did he say all the crap he had to go through because of us? Does that mean he has something against us? This is the first time we've ever met. That means... Oh, this is my first time meeting him too. I did mention that this was my first time coming here, didn't I? Could this be another one of the Corrupterman's traps? It's showtime! This is the opening act of Axel's Revenge! Congratulations, you now have a full party in this Gaia 4. All your main characters. We have Volcanus now. Yay! Although, uh, <laughs> yeah, this chapter is weird. Um, but, uh, let's not waste any time, let's start talking about our final, uh, compan companion, Volcanus, as there's kind of a lot to talk about her, as I think there's a lot of variance with her as opposed to your other characters. <sighs> okay, so, okay, right, but, uh, alright, the level, uh, just, uh, just gotta destroy the no entry panel to, uh, I mean, you can climb over the wall, but, um, and if you just get rid of the enemy plus 50%, this level isn't that bad at all. Anyway, uh, Volcanus would be a worthwhile addition to the party, even if she never fired a sh single shot. Her basic ability, Angel Glitter, is superb, which, by the way, um, adds 20% to the stats of adjacent male allies. That is fantastic. Especially if you use Valvatoris and Fenric a lot. It buffs nearby male, male allies, meaning that Fenric and Valvatoris both have the potential to get a substantial damage improvement just by having Volcanus around. You don't even need to use a slot from your deployment party to get this effect. Have Volcanus deploy temporarily, stand near uh, males before they make crucial attacks, and then put her back to base by undoing her moves. When you do want Vol Volcanus out in the field, 
make uh, use her mix of arrow-like attack skills and natural gun techniques to hit just about anything that moves. Well, Candace doesn't excel at damage until she gets unconditional love, but afterwards she's solid. Beyond those issues, Volcanus gains several buff spells as she levels. With these spells, such as Braveheart, Volcanus can make the party's damage output even higher. So, Volcanus makes a good professor substitute until you unlock that class. Alright, um... She's pro proficient in staves and guns. Uh, she has a 25% resistant to all elements. She learns healing spells up to the Giga as well as Espoir, which removes um, status effects, as well as t Braveheart, Magic Boost, and Target Lock. All of those are very useful. Um, I believe the, the buff is initially 20%, and with mana you can increase the... you can increase the increase to 50%. Very nice. Alright. Uh, her abilities are Angel Glitter, which adds 20% uh, stats of adjacent male allies. You'll be using this all the time, like the guide says, even if you don't fight with her. Just take her out, put her next to Fenric and Val, and enjoy a 20% increase to all stats. And if it's Fenric where you put Val and uh, Volcanus ne both next to him, his stats will increase by 50%, furthering your incentive to use Volcanus overall. Uh, this can also work for a measle in boosting his, um, all of his stats, making him a better, uh, spellcaster. So she's good for more than half of your party. Yeah, I'm, no, she's good for exactly half of the main cast. It's fantastic. Alright, her next one, Goldfinger, doubles the hell gained by her killing blows. Um, she doesn't usually get the killing blows unless you go out of your way to do so. Um, this, this ability can be ignored, honestly. It's, I mean, for a thousand mana, it can be spent in a lot of better ways at, at this point in the game. So I would actually hold off on that until mana is not an issue. Although her last ability, Unconditional Love, adds 30% to her attack. By that, they mean damage output, not her actual attack stat. But reduces the hell gain to zero. Um, you gain hell every time you kill an enemy, but only her hell will be zero when she gets a kill. Still, this ability is um, almost necessary if you, if you actually intend to um, do damage with her. Not to mention, she very well may be your first gun user in the game. She was mine. So, it's a good idea. Uh, guns, while uh, guns are kind of weak... Uh, th their range is fantastic, and, uh, you know, they usually have, uh, good hitboxes, but, you know, they're limited to a straight line, and the power of most of the attacks are very low. Like, I haven't seen the last gun skill, but all the skills up to there are still no higher than D, and a lot, most of them are E and F, and with, with a power that low, you really need to pump those skills up with mana, which causes SP, and you really need really good raw hit and speed stats to make the most of guns. So the 30% boost at the cost of hell is a no-brainer. It's absolutely fantastic, you should learn it. Uh, and it's actually not a bad skill to teach to some other characters, since hell overall is not hard to come by. I mean, there is shit does get expansive. Mandatory repo! I like that move. Nice and colorful. Um, yeah, what was I saying? Oh uh, yeah, it, this is a nice ability to spread to your um, partners. Uh, give this to Fuka, for example. Um, if you didn't give her like physical boost from Val already, uh, this will really increase her damage output. Desco could also use it as a second ability. Although, don't give this to all your characters because you know you don't want to make no hell. Uh, you do need money at some. Although, the bonus gauge does give a lot. Anyway, um... Her aptitudes are HP 90, SP 120, Attack 100, Defense 90, Intelligence 120, Resistance 130, Hit 120, hit 120 and Speed 115. Um, those are all in the right areas, if you ask me. Uh, HP could be a bit better, but... Remember, if you reincarnate her five times, her, H her aptitudes will be... 
Um, HP 115, SP 130, no, 145, Attack 125, Defense 115, Intelligence 145, uh, yeah, Intelligence 145, Resistance 155, Hit 145, and Speed 140. Um, like I said, because guns are weak, and if you want her to be to actually do damage in your party uh you really need to a boost mana and b reincarnate her reincarnate her to get the to increase that speed and hit stat guns do damage based on the average of your hit and speed as a result you can ignore attack and intelligence and kind of ignore defense as well since with a high enough speed stat um you're more likely to evade attacks as opposed to try to take the damage. Not to mention, with guns, you're going to be so... F you're going to be, uh, you know, f so far back, um, you're less likely to be put in danger. It's the melee characters that need good defense stats. Um, while she is good... While she can use stabs, um, you have a measle at this point. Um, not to mention uh, probably a few other magic characters and she doesn't learn any offensive magic on her own it's going to take so much work to actually teach her any magic I do not encourage it at the slightest um, equipment for um, Volcanus is there are s if, if she's gonna have a gun uh, glasses are good to increase hit although I would focus more on speed so you can give her not to mention her natural movement is only four so a, a good pair of shoes to increase her speed will also, as well as her movement, will be highly beneficial. Um, so maybe one pair of glasses, one pair of shoes, and one orb to increase resistance and SP because she will be using a lot of SP and more resistance is good for healing. So, you know, good strategies are put her next to Fen and Val, and if you've increased Brave, Brave Heart a bit, um, you know, hit all three of you for a nice additional attack bonus, and then just watch attack, uh, Val and Fenric cause havoc. Uh, let's see. Oh, her moves. You got Mandatory Repo. This, uh, the power is F. Um, all of her special skills are based on hit and speed as well, further encouraging the use of guns. No truck is unsnappable. Um, powers F, but it can hit four tiles away in any direction, including diagonal. So, um, if you don't want to rely on triple burst or speeding bullet, two of the first gun moves, uh, this this move is handy in its versatility and the fact that you don't have to be in a straight line to hit your enemy. Then she learns Angelic Whip, powers E, and it hits um, three tiles in front of you in a straight line. Uh, it's also wind based, so it's weak, but. Um, you can use it to hit enemies that are weak to wind, although that's what you should be using Fenric for. Uh, I, I, I don't really use this move at all anymore. And then finally, you have Goddess Artemis. Um, powers D, and it has probably the weirdest area of effect I've ever seen. Um, as the guide says, look carefully before triggering this skill. Its strange area of effect can be useful, but it's also one of those attacks that can hit allies when you are looking carefully. Like Mandatory Repo, this attack has the perk of going beyond the normal attack style of guns. Um, yeah, this one kind of... Uh, let me see if I can't describe it. It's... It's a horizontal row of three directly in front of you. Then the two side panels go three forward. And then they go one to the outward side each. So it kind of looks like... Um kind of looks like a U, kind of looks like a horseshoe, actually. Yeah, that's it. It hits 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 enemies. Although the odds that they're all in that, <laughs> lined up in that area is odd. But, um, you know, it's one of her more powerful attacks that she learns early. Even more powerful than a lot of her gun skills. Uh, yeah. So, but Volcanus, more than other characters, really needs uh, the character world uh, to make proficient on the front lines. Otherwise, if you want guns, 
Oh, have we seen this yet? Not bad. It's a giant sword. Ow. Um. Long guns. Well, I'll continue this in a bit. Let's watch more of the story. It's a good thing that we defeated them. But what exactly were they? Those demons that had Warden Axel's voice attacked us all at once. That's not something I'd want to experience ever again. This is a serious nightmare. I mean, I know this is all a dream, but I'm really not enjoying this part. Desko's the one who's not enjoying this. How dare you stand in my way time after time? Desko? What did you just say? Huh? D did Desko just say that? Desko doesn't understand herself either. <laughs> I will keep returning over and over again, like a phoenix, until I kill the perennial instructor. That's right. I'll get my revenge on him for everything that he's done to me. What's going on here? Are you holding an Axel impersonator contest? Well, it's just... A Hey, what the hell happened to me? I don't get it. My, my, my mouth was moving on its own. This is weird. It's definitely not normal. I see. So that's what's going on. My lord, it seems that this was caused by a new kind of virus that has become a pandemic all throughout the netherworld. A virus? So it's like a cold? Big Sis, viruses are the cause of many more diseases than just a cold. So, the virus is making us do these embarrassing impressions of Ward and Axel? That's not the only thing it will cause. The imitations are only the early symptoms of an A-virus infection. Then, is something even more horrible gonna happen to us? That's right. Eventually, you will notice small changes in your body. And finally... Finally? What'll happen next? You'll turn into Axel. What? Into Axel? No! It doesn't matter if this is just a nightmare! Desko refuses to become such a thing! Desko wants to be a final boss! Word! I want to become a great demon! But instead, I'm gonna become Axel? There's gotta be a cure for this, right? Right? Sadly, there is no cure. At least, not at the moment. No! Stop acting so miserable. A virus is nothing to be afraid of. Just get rid of it with your spirit and fortitude. You're letting a virus take advantage of you because you all lack those factors. Follow my guidance and start eating sardines every day from now on. You'll soon get the spirit, fortitude, and strong body to fight it. We wouldn't need doctors if fortitude and spirit could cure every disease. Sardines are good, but please, consider what we're facing. Oh, th th that's right! You can't solve this matter just by eating sardines! You seem rather calm. Isn't there a chance that you're infected with it as well, Mr. Werewolf? Staying calm is kind of my thing. Shouldn't you consider your own comment, Thief Angel? It's most likely that everyone here has been infected with the A-Virus. The incubation time it takes for our symptoms to show probably depends on our immune systems and our general immunity against the Warden. Then we better find a cure soon or something terrible will happen to the entire Netherworld. Everyone will become Warden Axel? Will this Artina lookalike Angel turn into him too? Do it! I must focus on usurping the regime! Just as Fenric said, women are truly unnecessary for someone who is on the road to becoming a ruler. Let's go, everyone! Crying over this infection won't solve anything! If we've been infected, then we simply have to find a cure before we all completely turn into Axel! We'll find an antidote by the time we bring this area under our control!
turn into Axel. Ugh. That's a fate worse than death. I'm glad the game thinks so, too. Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, normally, I run around and I, you know, go for the chests and talk to characters and stuff, but I noticed that I didn't have Volcanus yet, so I wanted to do the next level to see if I would get her, and sure enough, um, you know, they give her to you right after... Whew. Uh, right after you start the first level. Oh yeah, um, actually instead of glasses, you should probably give her an emblem. Emblems increase all stats, and she has well-rounded aptitudes overall, and those probably benefit her more than anything, because she needs SP for spells, resistance for healing, um, HP dis and defense for a survival, and hit and speed for damage. So, you know, as opposed to, you know, Valvatores, who really just needs HP and attack, <laughs> um, Although, I know, I know you feel compelled to put, you know, such good items on a character like that. Uh, technically, it benefits of a character like Volcanus more, who uses more of her stats. But yeah, if you don't have a gun user by this point, and there's only really one other class that is good at guns, and that's, surprise, the gunner, um, you'll probably want Volcanus as your gun user, which is what I did. However, if you uh, want to actually do damage with your guns, uh, a gunner class is still quite useful. And since it's actually a mo uh, a character class that was in the last level and the next one, I feel we should go over that class next, just so we can further uh, finish talking about guns. All right, let's teach her her first gun skills. Those are handy. See the powers F; it can hit four spaces away. Splitting bullet powers E it can hit five spaces away. Or is it six? I think it was six, actually. Yeah, teach her all her spells. Um, you're almost never going to use... Don't don't put any mana in a tri-bullet. Splitting bullet is better in every category. Better in range and power. Alright, let's see here. The gunner. Gunner, 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 gunner. There we go. There you go. I actually think the gunner looks pretty damn cool too. You know, I actually I've never really noticed, but his hat actually has kind of a, uh, like a Jack Skellington smiley face. All right, there's no story in the next chapter, so you know, another two for one. Okay, gunners, uh, raise a thief and a skull to level 15 or higher to access this class. Um. So you might um, stumble upon this class quite easily. Though it takes more work to get damage out of a gunner than a fighter, these characters are some of the deadliest on the field. Their mix of long-range, decent area of effect attacks, and offensive abilities make them a wonderful partner for melee attacks. Oblivion Hill. I hate vertical stages. They take the longest to complete. Alright. Um, there's only so much room next to a given target. At best, you can get four of your people around an enemy boss. Because of this, you're limited to the amount of damage you can bring to bear against such an enemy. To raise that amount, start adding people like gunners. These characters can stand behind melee party members and join in on combos and team attacks alike. Gunners are especially geared for this because many of their abilities focus on combos. A gunner with making with uh, sorry with marking and assist makes it much easier to bring down high evasion enemies. This class combination should be used by a gunner to start off a long range, a long chain, change of attacks. I think they mean chain. Oh, Brady games. The gunner makes the person after them hit. Your axe wielder follows up and reduces the target's damage, and everything builds from there. Good point. Um, proficient in fist and. Guns. Well, what do you know? Uh, 50% resistant to fire, 25% resistant to wind, and neutral to ice. Not bad. Um, as for this stage, uh, something I didn't notice until just now is that this lone green block is actually a reverse damage block as opposed to no entry, which I thought they all were. My mistake. I was not perceptive enough. 
theoretically, I could have just um, slap a character on top of that and do uh, magic damage from afar or gun damage until I'd safely take out all of those gunners behind those blocks. But uh, I thought it was pertinent to take out the walls. My bad. So if you're going to do this, abuse that tile, unlike I did. Uh, with, with enough shoes, you can actually just climb the wall itself. And I'm setting up my slime because those guns don't have any elemental damage. Yuck. Here's a new one. That's crazy. <laughs> Although, get used to seeing that attack because they're going to be doing it a lot. What's even worse, they all sound like Axel. Jesus. Anyway. Let's see. Their base ability, marking, gives the next ally in a combo a 100% critical rate. Sweet. And since combos are the name of the day for, you know, boss characters, that is super handy. Their other... Their other abilities... Okay, their other abilities... Assist... During a combo, the next ally attack has 100% accuracy. Learn this. Learn this. Guns already lower speed by a hundred, uh, when they hit enemies. It, like the, like the guy says, if you make your next, um, character an axe user, uh, they will hit, thanks to this ability, and they will have a hundred percent chance of criticaling, and they will lower defense for the rest of your characters. Um, on the combo. This is super useful. Okay. After the word, uh, of course, it doesn't have to be axes. Anything that you want to hit. Like, if you know the enemy has uh, a big, like, wind resistance, for example. Uh, sorry, a big wind weakness, but your uh, wind mage only has, like, a 20% chance of hitting them, uh, gunners will help with that. Afterwards, we have second attack. Excuse me. They always call during dinner. Or in this case, during recording. Uh, where was I? Ah, uh, yes. Wow, six damage. Fucking Axel. Even though it's not really Axel. Wait, did I hit my... Oh, no. <laughs> Next in the oh yeah, speaking of Magic Knight, that reminds me. Um, I read about how to ensure Echo will always work. Um, first of all, just doing it. Uh, queue up an attack. And you see these, um, the faces in the upper left corner? That shows who's going to attack next. If Echo is going to work, you will see two faces of the Magic Knight. If you don't see it, cancel the attack and try again until you see it. Uh, just keep abusing the random number generator or the RNG until you see it and you will always get Echo to work. Wow, I can't believe I never knew that. It's kind of cheap. Something I should definitely try though. Against single target bosses, an extra hit is immensely useful. Even more so than elemental force probably. At least until it's 99% damage, then it's pretty much the same thing. Anyway, uh, second attack adds 50% damage when attacking as part of a combo. Um, only useful if your gunner is already doing obscene damage. Od odds are, a gun is not going to be doing the most damage at this point in the game. So uh, only use this if you are if you actually want to do damage with a gunner as opposed to assist with other characters. And finally, gun trick. 30% of hit is added to speed when a gun is equipped. Super useful. If, again, your gunner is going, going to be doing primary damage by himself. Um, what this means is when you reincarnate or you make a gunner, you can really pump up his base hit stat and one third of it will go into the speed stat as well, so you can kind of skew it to get better stat gains in total. Uh, very handy for raw stats. 
Let's see, the gunner aptitudes are HP 90, SP 110, attack 90, defense 90, intelligence 80, resistance 110, hit 120, speed 110. Um, pretty decent overall. Uh, resistance is resist against magic, and that makes sense against a uh, unit that's going to be you know far away from the targets, as opposed to defense. Ugh, get used to the speeding bullets. All right. Then we have the sniper, the outlaw, the hitman, the bullseye, and the desperado. Nice. Desperado has HP of 100. Hit only when up 10%. SP 135, attack 100, defense 100, intelligence 90, resistance 135, hit 145, speed 135. Uh, as a result, with that high SP aptitude, you can really increase the SP and almost use special attacks exclusively, which means you can increase the man the damage of your gun skills with mana, which is almost necessary if you want to be doing any damage with them. Uh, let's see here. Uh, glasses and shoes are obviously useful on a class like this. Uh, pretty much the same way as Volcanus. You know, maybe one one piece of armor and, you know, um, an emblem and either glasses or shoes. Although the natural movement is five. So they don't, they don't need speed as much as... I say fist users need more speed and gun users need more hit. But then again, it is the average. And the hit aptitude is higher than the speed, which means... Um, you'll gain more a better stat boost from glasses than you would from, than you would from shoes. And they already have a natural movement of five. Not to mention guns hit far, so uh, that's pretty decent overall. So they have really useful abilities, and well, their their speed their aptitude is only five less than Volcanus, I think at the first level when it comes to guns. So they're actually pretty close. Volcanus will eventually have the edge when she learns Unconditional Love to increase her damage. Uh, otherwise, it's a close race. Use one or the other for a gun user. Although, I'm finding guns to be a little lackluster. I hate the gun skills, to be honest. They had a lot more cross um, shapes in the old, in the older game in Disgaea 3. In this one, there's like a row of three, then a horizontal row of three. They're just hitting less targets overall, which is a shame. And in Disgaea 2, they were based purely on your hit stat, so you could even ignore speed and focus only on hit. Ah, this should get rid of them. Final boss power! Leave it to Desco. We can yes, we can. Thank you, Desco Obama. And those are the two gunner classes. So, yeah, uh, Volcanus take a ton of bit of work if you actually want to do damage with her. But I like her. She's never not useful thanks to her he thanks to her ability and spells. And it's always nice to have a backup healer. Alright, how's the progress of this fight going? Oh, and uh, those those three shamans are actually were kind of annoying. All three of them were lowering all my stats by 15%. But now that's just them, they can't attack for Diddly. We need a nice, healthy slime. Is 
you can see, Fuka is kind of falling behind in the damage. I really need to get her a new axe. Oh, that's the problem when you have no damage abilities. Yeah, because yeah, because Val is such a keen intelligence user. Oh my God, yay! Slime cheer is so much better than slimy punch. You can hit four tiles away, I think. Damn. Yeah, I'm a slab, so what? Team Girl Squad! That's pretty much exactly what they sound like. Really? Oh, I moved her. Damn. I don't even need Volcanus in there. Yeah. Do -do -do -do. 2000? I must have gone into the item world of that level. Of that weapon. Yeah, 197. She needs a better axe. 240. That's better. Not a huge difference, but every little bit counts. They gave her shoes and glasses. If you have an emblem, though, those are nice. By this chapter, you should have some devil's rings. Or maybe even a uh, angel feather. Is that what it's called? Angel feather? Alright, well, that's it the installment. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.